you you left you you now realize this very man made were there some things online that you can remember that really stuck out to you like um the maybe the idea of joseph smith's many wives or um you know the idea of the book of abraham like was there anything that you can recall that was like hold on what the heck they don't tell us this this is this is too much Look at you knowing about the book of Abraham. You know. Uh, <laughs> that was actually the one thing that I was like, oh, if he made this up, he made the rest up. I found out about the book of Abraham. Uh, for people who don't know or maybe haven't seen it on your channel before, it's this book of scripture that Joseph Smith got from a traveling mummy show. You heard that right. A traveling mummy show came through New York and he said, I want to buy a mummy. That's what I'm going to do with the church's money. So he buys a mummy Inside it, there is a scroll, and he goes, well, since I have the power of God, I will translate this. He translates this, what he called Reformed Egyptian, which isn't a real thing, spoiler alert, and <laughs> and it turned into the Book of Abraham. And the Book of Abraham is responsible for things like God lives on a planet called Kolob, and the race thing, where they believe that Black people were bad in the pre-existence and that's why they were cursed with dark skin in this life bunch of really bad stuff mm -hmm. stuff that has shaped the church quite a bit and i find out that now that people can understand and translate egyptian everyone's like ooh, ooh, ooh let's translate it again and prove that joseph smith is a true prophet he wasn't it was a funeral script a very common funerary text that were often found in sarcophagi that's the right way to say it. And so when I found that out, I realized if he made that up, he made up the entire thing because he, quote, translated the Book of Mormon by actually putting his head in a hat with a rock. And <laughs> which is so dumb. I found out that that was true. And I felt like the biggest idiot because the <laughs> church doesn't tell you that <clears throat> everything that they tell you and show you the way that it's depicted is they have all of these paintings of Joseph Smith with the plates right next to him, and he's looking over and he's writing it himself, which also he didn't do. He had a scribe do it. So there are so many inconsistencies in the ways that they sneakily get around the truth. But even now, the church has admitted and the prophet has shown <laughs> so embarrassing on a video. Yeah, this is how he did it. And he puts his head into his top hat. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> wow. Just the fact that we believed it or people don't know that they believe it. And when you tell them, they'll probably say, that's not true. Well, look at your prophet. He said that it is true. So a lot of that's happening now with Mormonism. You're getting people, creators like myself, who are putting out the actual information, members of the church who are clapping back and they're like, that's not true. And then I give them the church's website. I'm like, they did say Joseph Smith had this many wives. And then they're like, well... What do you say to that when the church actually comes out with the truth, but they hide it so deep in the website that people just won't stumble upon it, except us Exmos? So yes, Book of Abraham was a big one, uh, probably the only thing I needed. But then I discovered the first vision, how there are multiple accounts, and this is what the entire church is founded on, Joseph Smith seeing God and Jesus coming down to him in a pillar of light when he was asking which religion to join, and they said none, restore my one true church upon the earth, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, but then I found out there's multiple versions, and the church doesn't use the first or the last, they pick one in the middle, and find out that the first vision wasn't even introduced to the members of the church back in that time until years later, like eight years later. How is this making any sense? Um, stuff like that. And then it wasn't until 2020 when I started writing my book, which I'm working on, a memoir of my life in Mormonism, coming out of Mormonism, uncovering abuse and healing from it, that I started really looking into the history because I thought if I'm going to write a book about it, I need to know what I'm talking about. And that is when I just lost my mind with so many things that I had no idea about. The Joseph Smith and his plural wives, 30 four wives or something. They still don't even know exactly how many. Right. Mother-daughter combos, sister combos, women who are already married. I was just like, this church is nuts. Blood oaths. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's just so wild. 
I um, recently talked to my buddy Gary Stone, who I told you before we hit record, um, is a descendant of William Clayton, who was like Joseph Smith's best friend and personal scribe. And mm-hmm. the Doctrines and Covenants uh, 132, the, the backstory Polygamy. to that, we have the letters from William Clayton that Joseph Smith, his brother, and William Clayton are in a room. Joseph tried to kind of sneak or present the idea of having a polygamous marriage things with other women. And Emma wasn't having it. And she flips out. Well, of course and goes, not. Yeah. If you're having multiple wives, I'm having multiple husbands. Well, he goes with William and they wrote doctrines and covenants 132, which is like one of the major parts of the faith of Mormonism today. Yeah. And if you read it, it's God speaking to Emma through Joseph getting her setting her straight to obey the prophet and and then eventually he like directly says thus saith the lord god you cannot have many husbands but he can have several wives i mean it's so obvious it's so obvious it's so obvious and we learn about all these scriptures so doctrine and covenants is something that is direct revelation from god right to joseph smith <clears throat> it's not an ancient text it's not part of the golden plates that he quote translated. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's so clear that the Doctrine and Covenants is just Joseph Smith pushing an agenda. And he receives revelation that his friend needs to take out a mortgage on his farm so that he can give Joseph Smith the money to print whatever. And then this guy sadly goes bankrupt. It's just it's so clear when you look at it from that perspective. And he loved using the angel with a flaming sword thing. I mean, this angel, who is this angel? He's come to him multiple times. An angel with a flaming sword appeared to me and said that if you don't accept polygamy, then he will smite you, Emma, and he will also smite me. And he used this with multiple women. He would go to them and coerce them because most of them didn't want to marry Joseph Smith. They were like, nah, I'm set. And he was like, well, if you don't, an angel with a flaming sword will smite me. And then they're like... Well, if, okay, I mean, I guess I have to. Then. <laughs> it's just, it's so bonkers. So when you really look into the facts and the history and the journal entries of these women that were forced into doing it, when you find out that there was a man who routinely practiced abortions down the, the road from Joseph Smith's house, because that's the other thing they'll say is, well, he didn't have sex with his polygamous wives because there are no children. Don't you think there's other ways around that? And some of them were already married, so they probably did have Joseph Smith's children. I just think the evidence is too strong, especially considering he was a treasure digger before that and a con artist before that. It all lines up. It's just a scam. 